Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is the Modern 6502 webpage by Mike Cohn. That includes a 6502 he put on his house for spiritual protection. And the main reason I'm looking at this page is that I would like to download this LED Blink 65C816 file. This is so I can run it on the W65C265SXB development board. He wrote this code to use the Necken ASM assembler. And in this video, I'm going to try to convert this code over to work with the CA65 assembler. Okay, so let's get the code. Let's see, we want to copy the raw address, go into my working directory, and then we wget that GitHub raw address. And there's our assembly file. Let me pull it up in Visual Studio Code. Now you will see the Atari Dev Studio down in the lower left corner. We use that with the DASM assembler, but that's not what we're using here. We're actually using this 6502-65816 assembly language, CA65. And the extension I'm using for CA65, or I guess CC65 if we get around to it, Actually, I don't remember what extension I'm using. Let's go look in the preferences, extensions. Let's look up 65816 and see what pops up. Ah, so I'm using this extension by Cole Campbell called CA65 Macro Assembler Language Support. There you go. There are some others to choose from, but this is one I picked somewhat arbitrarily. Let's see, how does it want me to actually run the assembler? Invoke CL65. Okay, CL65 is sort of a generic front end for the CC65, CA65, et cetera suite. Okay, let's check out the feature contributions. It gives us a 6502-65816 assembly language with the ID CA65. Handles the .asm extension. So that all looks good, I guess. Let's see. So if I go back to the code, that's the language we're running. Can I just start debugging? Ah, you don't have an extension for debugging 6502-65816 assembly? What do you mean should we find an extension in the marketplace? I'm already running an extension that should handle that. Why is it showing me all this? Why doesn't this just work? Ugh. Okay, so it looks like the extension wants to handle compiling with a task, and tasks only work if you have a workspace. So it looks like it wants me to create a workspace. Let's see, can I add folder to workspace? Save workspace as, duplicate workspace. Am I already in a workspace? I don't really understand Visual Studio Code that well. Let's try save workspace as. Okay, we'll call this our LED workspace. Sure. Okay, it's complaining I don't have PowerShell, whatever. Okay, now that I'm in a workspace, will you happily start debugging? No, it's still unhappy. This makes me sad. If anybody knows what's going on here that can let me know in the comments, please let me know in the comments because I want this to just work, but it looks like I may have to set it up myself. If you know how to make it so I don't have to set it up myself, let me know. Anyway, configure default build task. Uh, how about create task file from template? How about we'll start with the MS build template? All right. Um, can I just copy and paste this bit from the extension description? Let's try that. Let's go over to our task JSON. And I'm just going to paste this in right here. Let's see what that does. Why do I need to do that? All right. Now, if I've done that, will it build? Does it build? Does it build? No. OK, it doesn't like me to debug, at least. What about run build task? Oh, okay, so there's a build task. Okay, so it doesn't want me to run the debugger, I guess, because there's not actually a debugger. Okay, that's legit. Ah, there we go. Okay, it's at least running on it now. Tries to 
run the assembler. All right, and then it complains. Okay, now we're making progress. So it looks like it doesn't want me to use one of these debugging things that normally compiles and then tries to execute it. It wants me to run build task. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. Now I can actually start debugging, or I should say start the translation process. Okay, so the assembler has a P816 directive. Let's replace this dot six five eight one six with dot p eight one six. Let's now try to run the build task again. So it doesn't like dot org, all this other stuff, unexpected trailing garbage characters. I wonder if it doesn't like this format for hex values. So maybe let's do that. Let's try running that, or I should say running the build task. Okay, let's see what it's complaining about now. Oh, it seemed to like that. Okay, so the next thing it's complaining about is line 16 and also line 19. Oh, you know what? I bet you the assembler has special directives for setting the eight or 16 bit modes of the register. Okay, so it has dot A16 and dot A8. And these are designed to switch the accumulator to 16-bit or switch the accumulator to 8-bit. Note, this command does not emit any code. It will tell the assembler to create 8-bit operands for immediate accumulator addressing or 16. Okay, so that's an important note. So I think we can put dot .a8 here. And what that means is later on, we don't need the dot .b here with the LDA command. It should say the dot .a8 handles that. But I think I still need to set this flag here in order to actually tell the processor that's the mode we're in. And I say that because of this will not emit any code clause we have in here. Now, if I look at something like dot .x16 or dot .xy16, is there a similar mode for the index registers? How about .i16? Ah, there we go. All right, so for the index registers, we can use .i16 and .i8. But again, that just tells us that the immediate operands in the code are either 16-bit or 8-bit. It does not actually seem to emit code to switch the flags in the processor. So... I think I still need this command here. All right, but we should convert these to the more standard hex format like that with the, oh, I don't know if it's more standard. I think it's more standard with the dollar sign. Let's see, let's also do that here. We'll do that here. Convert that, convert that like that. All right, and convert that here. Now, I don't think, do we really need, oh, if we're going to do it like this, I bet we need to put an i16, .i16 directive here. This set, rep commands, these should really be macros, but we'll worry about that another day. Okay, let's play another game of what will the compiler complain about this time. Wait a minute, I thought I'd change that. Did I get overly zealous with the undo command at some point? That should be P816, and this should be a dollar sign. All right, let's try building that run build task. Let's see, it's complaining about an illegal addressing mode, and then it fails to launch. It's complaining about line 17, and 21. Oh, these are immediate addresses. Oh, I probably messed that up here too. Let's see, that's probably immediate. This is also immediate. I had lost the immediate signs. This should be immediate then and and this should also be immediate. 
Okay. I could not find a configuration file. Wait, C64? Is it trying to compile for the Commodore 64 as its default setting? All right, so it looks like it's happy with the code, but now it's trying to link against something else. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that. Okay, to get some more insight, let me try running that CL65 command from the command line. Oh, cannot find config file c64.config. Okay, so it is looking for some configuration file. It's defaulting to one for the Commodore 64, I bet. I bet you that's what c64 is. Oh, but notice it did create a .o file. See it anyway. Sure. Yeah, okay. Or it created a .o file. So it has symbols in here. So I bet you that's for linking and debugging purposes. All right, so to actually create object code that we can upload to the development board, I think that's gonna take some more steps. Now, if I remove this .o file, let's see, can I run the compiler directly? Or I should say the assembler, I guess, CA65. Yeah, that created a .o file. So I bet CL65 runs the assembler, and then tries to run some other linker. All right, I think that's enough for tonight because it's 6.11 in the morning. And some people are waking up about now, but I'm going to go to bed.